If there's one thing that stuck with me with Gaia, it's the beauty that Afrikaans as a language is. My home language is Afrikaans. I don't speak it as much anymore because I speak English with my wife, I speak English with my friends. But I mean, there's a scene in this movie that just reminds me that when you speak Afrikaans fluently, it is beautiful and even a little frightening, as all beautiful things actually are if you think about it. Yle, viemel, sis Maias. Al om jylle nie ontdoorings en vermenigvuldig exponentieel in die gloed van die hoere en die afgodinne wat daans teen die mere van die nie ontdoorings en die veer van oneindige ontploffings. I just love how he rolls his R's that I cannot even do. It's just like, it's such a beautifully poetic language and I think that's probably my favorite scene from the whole movie. Welcome to Indecent. My name is Vincent and I'm here to take a look at some films, both old and new, to help you find what could be your next favorite movie. So if you have a heart for passion projects and low budget masterpieces, consider subscribing to our journey on the quest to find the ultimate independent production. But without wasting any more time, let's jump right into my thoughts and personal feelings on Gaia. Gaia is a 2021 proudly South African ecological horror thriller directed and produced by Yaku Boer. The plot revolves around a park ranger who takes shelter with two survivalists after an attack by mysterious creatures in a primordial forest. I did not have my sunglasses on for that entire intro. I feel guilty and ashamed. Anyway, so my general feelings, which will contain no spoiler talk, is that I liked this movie. Going in, I was a bit concerned because it felt like, okay, cool, the trailer suggests that this is a South African movie on a world-class standard. And as I started the movie, I'm like, okay, cool, cinematography is excellent, like world-class, like you could not, this, it doesn't feel like some local movie. But then the characters open their mouths and I'm like, e, okay, this is not amazing acting. Um, and... It's, it's weird because it's like just the first section of the movie, the acting really bothered me because after that, after that initial, let's say after the first act to be safe, I really wasn't bothered by the acting anymore. And I think it's in big part to the fact that a lot of this movie is in Afrikaans. And the moment the characters start talking Afrikaans, it just immediately feels so natural. And I think that's the problem I had with the acting is they were trying to stick to, to English in a way that didn't feel natural to South Africans. South Africans are known to really mix up languages languages and the way they talk. The glitch that you just saw is one that my camera so disappointingly makes a few times throughout this video. Please have grace as I was so happy with how this recording came out that I did not want to shoot it again and I will do my best to avoid these kind of glitches in the future. Even if it's a word here and there and the black guy introduced in the very beginning of the movie, the way he spoke just felt unnatural to me and felt like it was words of a page rather than a natural interaction. But I digress. I genuinely did like the movie. I think it had good thrills. It had really beautiful elements to it, really beautiful visuals. Really loved the unique visuals of this movie. From practical to CGI, it blends well together. There are times where you spot the CGI, but you know what? It is a low budget movie and I can completely excuse them for that. But it's got awesome creature design, awesome makeup, special effects and all in all, I think the casting for this movie is really well. And all these, these elements of the movie come together really well and present to you a fantasy horror in the style of Guillermo del Toro, but a little more, bit more toned down on the fantasy element, but it definitely felt like it had some inspiration that it was pulling from that. Now, it isn't a very long movie, sitting at a pretty one hour and 36 minutes. And this is one thing that I always look at to, to gauge how much I actually like a movie is, do I ever feel like being on my phone? It's a horrible thing and damn the 21st century, but I mean, it's, uh, it's the way that I realize if a movie is pulling me in or not. And I can honestly say I never came to a point in this movie where I felt the phone pulling me closer. So I had issues with it where there's a few, you know, those typical, well, that's stupid moments that movies have, like to give you an example, not something that happens in this movie, but where a bomb is about to explode and the two main characters have like a two minute dialogue and like this epic speech before the bomb explodes and they need to get away and you're like, oh, come on, just get away. There was that type of stuff in this movie that frustrated me, like stupid things of, oh, you should have saw, saw that or uh, why are you going into the cavern? Typical horror movie stuff, which has become a 
commonly known thing almost in horror movies where people make stupid decisions but this movie which i felt was based more on reality had a lot of moments where i felt like it took me out of that reality which it is based in and that annoyed me but like i said even that became fewer and fewer as the movie progressed it's just like the first act of the movie had its problems but it picked up from there the reason it picked up goes into spoiler talk so before i get there i'd just like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you love supporting the little guy the smaller movie the movie that didn't have that big a budget but still packs a mean punch and tugs at your heartstrings and if you like those sort of things subscribe to me as i support them because supporting me is supporting them and it would be greatly appreciated now to talk a little bit of spoiler talk and to pick up on why i think act two and act three works better my favorite part of this movie is the relationship that builds between the three main characters i love the fact that it isn't as much a flee from the crazy men in the bush story as i thought it would be but rather this struggle with old ways versus new ways and the curiosity of the leading female character whose name i have forgotten that's a very irresponsible thing for me to do as a reviewer it's honestly about how her curiosity for these people turn into a intrigue and then later on she kind of snaps back to reality another interesting thing i found about this movie is going into it i genuinely thought it would be a highly spirit-based horror movie i thought that gaia as a godly character would represent itself more straightforward and i'm really glad that it didn't because honestly i don't like horror movies that delve into the spiritual too much especially when i feel it's playing with things it shouldn't i think there are lines we shouldn't cross and i love the fact that they weren't trying to prove any spiritual point in this movie i had my suspicions that they'd be pushing some gaia mother earth message on us which they weren't and in fact this morning i was talking to my wife do they actually ever reference true a true spiritual being in this whole movie and if you think about it they don't there's just this almost sentient mushroom species thing that's slowly taking over the forest and it almost feels just like an adapted fungus it doesn't feel like it's a spiritual being and as humankind does we tend to idolize things and it feels like this microbiologist man discovered this amazing scientific biological discovery and chose to worship it because we seek to fill those holes in our lives his wife was dying and he needed something to hold on to to not lose that and unfortunately he turned to the wrong god a false god so it's more a story about idolizing something than it truly is about a true god or a true false god you know what i mean so um i like that i love the fact that this is essentially a prequel to a zombie movie <laughs> this is a prequel to a zombie apocalypse and i haven't played the game but the mushroom zombies in this film really remind me of what i've seen of the last of us's zombie characters so essentially you can really see this as a prequel to that type of apocalypse and that perfectly ties into what i want to discuss about the end of the movie but before we get there one issue i had with this movie is it's unnecessary nudity now 90 percent of nudity in movies are unnecessary um, and i'm not very for nudity in film but there are op artistic applications for it so that's a whole other discussion but i felt like i would have appreciated more if this movie made more efforts to creatively hide the nudity because people are naked nudity is a real part of human life but it doesn't mean you have to show it in the way that people do and i'm not saying this is not at all an overly sexual movie or anything but it's just a thing of like there's a scene where she's hanging over the bath and her hair is covering her bare chest and i felt like they could have just stuck with that they didn't have to expose her there were just a few times where i'm like okay why why is there nudity in the scene and that's something i actually <laughs> i can say look at a lot in this movie but i'm not talking about the nudity but how movies creatively hide it and i really i think that's an art form in itself and i think the movie could have made more of an effort to delve into that art form it's a small point but it's just a personal belief of mine lastly i want to talk about the ending where the sun is in the city of Cape Town I assume and he eats at a, a restaurant and they zoom in on his burger and it's got that fungus on and I love that it ties into that 
the fungus is going to take over the whole world. And I thought that was a really cool little ending. You know, one it's like such a perfect zombie apocalypse prequel ending. And I, I it left me with a, whoa, that's so cool. And it's an almost obvious thing to do. But the whole movie, I felt like zombie apocalypse from a fungus that's in the woods. I don't see the connection, but then it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy towards the end that I really loved. And I really loved that they left it there. So that's almost my favorite part of the movie after the Afrikaans monologue. Devil's apparatus! Oh, you devil's apparatus, right? But anyway, that's my thoughts on Gaia. Like the movie, could recommend it. It's in the vein of something like The Ritual, Midsommar, something along those lines, but didn't make me as uncomfortable. Although it really made my wife uncomfortable because she doesn't like skin creepy crawly things. So that's something that could be a trigger for you in this movie. But let me know what you thought of the movie. I really yearn to hear from you guys about what your thoughts are because I love the different perspectives that we have on movies. But that's it for me, Vincent Portrito on Indecent. Bye for now.